I'm going to go okay. ahead and start. Okay. And start talking about liquid smoke. Because I like using liquid smoke. It's a great additive to a lot of different, you know, foods to give it flavors. Especially when I make my, um, oh my God, I'm having senior moment soup. You know, I'd like to make different kinds of soup. And I'll add a little bit of the liquid smoke to give it, you know, kind of a barbecue-ish, you know, kind of flavor. Um, so, but as the name suggests, liquid smoke is a liquid that tastes smoke-like. And it replicates the flavor that's produced by smoke curing without actually requiring you to smoke anything. Um, the smoke, what happens is the smoke, as, as it's being created, the smoke rises, the stove top, it hits that cold air, and it's collected in droplets that run back down because it can, you know, changes back to a liquid. And it runs back down the pipe, and they collect this liquid. So liquid smoke really is made from smoke. So you've got the chips or sawdust from the hardwood, such as like hickory or mesquite, and they're burned at very high temperatures, and the particles of the smoke are collected in these condensers. So the resulting liquid is concentrated down for a stronger flavor. So along with this authentic smoke flavor, the resulting liquids also contain a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon called PHAs. Uh, these can be carcinogenic. Now, um, the amount, though, of PHAs in the liquid smoke is going to depend upon the type of wood and the smoking temperature, number one, and number two. But the amounts are quite small. Now, Dr. Greger has a video on this. And yep. I took the, I, you know, went in and watched the video. And the daily upper limit for this is 47 for the PHAs. Hickory smoke flavoring comes in at 0 0.8. The mesquite oh. comes in at 1.1. But here's the big deal. Here's the, here's the big thing. The carcinogens are fat soluble and the liquid smoke is water soluble. So you're getting the flavor without the toxins. So it still has a tiny, tiny little bit in there. But to give you a comparison of, of the range of this, the barbecue chicken has 88.5. Wow. I know for the, for the PHAs, the smoked herring has 140. And smoked salmon has 511. Holy so I, cow. I know, right? So this, the little tiny bit from the... The, the burning. You know, for the capturing the, it, the liquid smoke. The capturing it. Yeah, just for this little tiny bit that you're getting into it. And, and if you've ever used liquid smoke in any kind of recipes, we're talking a dash, you know, right. for like a whole pot. Right. You know, I like, pay, you know, adding it a little bit to my split pea soup. Mm. Yeah. That makes it, it just, it has a, just a, a beautiful flavor to it. A very distinct flavor to it. Yeah. And I also read, uh, watched that Dr. Greger's video on smoke. And also Dr. Furman talks about it too in his books about when the meat is directly on the grill and getting that charring, that that's right. where the carcinogens are, are formed. But um, I love liquid smoke. It's, it's a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know mm -hmm. Beeman Paz has a good one that they have oh you just happen to have it right there okay yep it, that's the that's the balsamic right this is the bima and paws liquid balls li liquid balsamic vinegar smoke flavor and right. i'll tell you i've just got some in the cap here and um i'd never had this before um any balsamic vinegar that was smoke flavored and it's truly smoky i i don't know how chef terry does it but this has got such an amazing and as you can see this bottle is empty this was the first one i combined this one with her other flavors on my veggies and it's so good on brown rice and on potatoes it's amazing the next jar i'm gonna get is gonna be the 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 32 ounce jar i don't care how much money it cost i mean it's yeah, delicious not cheap, but, but but the thing is is the 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 commercial liquid smoke has just as much flavor and now we know mm -hmm. that um that it's it's okay well, just use that too. Tiny amounts. Tiny but amounts. Yeah. The um, and by the way, Bima and Paws. Uh, if you go to her website and order, you can get a ten percent discount. Uh, if you just say the code is Starch Queens. Yep, it's a ten percent so. discount. It's and it's uh, wonderful. I just want to interject real quick, everybody that's watching. Thank you. Um, if you can please share to your um, to your timeline, we would appreciate it so that we can help uh, reach as many many people as possible. That was a great question, Jean. That was a really good question. Yeah. Well, and Tiffany says that she adds it to her to tofu with nutritional yeast and graduated granulated garlic, and then air fries it. Ooh. Ooh. 
mm, on the that French fry good. setting. <laughs> yeah. And Gina Carr is asking for the link. We'll put the link to Bina, but Bima and Paul's in this at the end of the, um, of the broadcast, of the show. Gina. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's really just Bima and Paws, B E M A A N D P A S dot com. Those are, yeah. I forget what, what heritage she is, but the Bima and Paws comes from, that's like the name she has for it's her grandma and grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Bima. And Bima's grandma who, and Paws. Yeah. Grandpa. Yeah. I just think that's so And cute. who raised her? Yeah. It's who raised her. And, yeah. and she does amazing things with these balsamic vinegars. Yeah. My favorite, Racy Mango and Pineapple. Uh, Very with good. A I second, have them both. With the second coming in at the sesame ginger. Ooh, yep. I, I have use all that. of them. The one that I like and have kind of developed my own favorite uh, salad dressing is the strawberry lime, I think it is. And then I put a um, squeeze of uh, lemon juice in there on a salad. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. What's all our right. next question, Jean? So, uh, next question is coming in from um, our Starch Queens member, Be uh, R um, Rabbi Beth Mazur. She's a Starch Queen member. And Beth is asking, um, I am wondering how many of you recommend to eat veggies for breakfast? It's something I learned from Chef AJ's videos. And although I resisted for a few minutes, now it is my habit. I feel it does help me to start my day solid on a solid footing it doesn't mean that I won't have fruit or starch with my first meal of the day, which may not be until morning or noon, depending on if I've exercised in the morning or not. But I start with raw or cooked non-starchy veg vegetables always, almost always now. Do others do this? It takes some getting used to, but I find it's a help helpful trick. Let me talk. Take. Let me take that you one. You take that one because I, I I can just see you're positively vibrating for that one. <laughs> so Chef AJ's approach in her Ultimate Weight Loss program is all about food addiction, and it's all about calming the brain and yeah. starting your day with a low starch, no sugar, no grain, no refined grain breakfast because it calms the brain. Um, a savory breakfast. When you think about it. Um, okay, back in the day, who was having Fruit Loops and all of those sugar-coated cereals? You know, Captain, Captain Crunch, Count Chocula. Count Chocula was my <laughs> brother's. I mean, where's the nutrition in that, right? There Please. is none. But there's also, I mean, right? I, and my favorite was Lucky Charms, and I would save the marshmallows for after. So I'd pick out all of the little you know, cereals, and then I would eat the marshmallows that were in the milk last because Lucky Charms were the best. And then sometimes no, no. I would Captain even take Crunch. Lucky... Ch I Captain would even Crunch. Take, no, Captain Crunch always tore up my mouth. But uh, here's the good one is, is a combo, Fruit Loops and Lucky Charms. <laughs> oh, God. I did that. Yeah, I was that. I did that. So, but a savory breakfast calms the brain when we're not seeking sugar. So think about bacon and eggs, thinking about, thinking about, you know, how other cultures start their breakfast. They start with rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes. So it's, you know, it was basically after World War II that the big commercial food industry started making packaged foods and just laden or just adding all this sugar to cereals and refined grains that has really increased food addiction. Right. And it's a biochemical addiction in our brain. So the idea is to start with a savory breakfast so that we're not getting that sugar hit. And by starting with that savory breakfast, it's calming the brain and we're not going to feed the cycle of, of uh, cravings because it's not going to raise that dopamine in our brain. So when we don't start the day with a dopamine um, hit, then two hours later, the dopamine is going to subside and it's going to go, okay, let's start seeking that sugar again. Let's start seeking that sugar again. So I don't always start my day with veggies for breakfast, but I try to Monday through Friday when I'm working. And it just, I like to do my veggies for breakfast are steamed greens and, and beans, beans and greens. And we're doing a greens and beans challenge right now in the Starch Queens. And I find that I feel so good when I start my breakfast every day savory. If I go with steel cut oats in the morning and then I have blueberries or raspberries on it, which is a perfectly healthy, wonderful breakfast, I, again, my brain is reacting to that sugar 
that fructose mm -hmm. in there. And again, in two hours, I'm ready to have something to eat. Whereas right. if I start with a vegetable that is, I like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, broccoli, uh, greens, or even a big salad in the morning, I can go clear till lunchtime and really truly not think about food. It is, it's that you've got, you've got to get that sugar out of your first meal of the day, actually all meals out of the day. But uh, this is a really well, good Robin, question, Beth. Yeah, Robin Patton said she, I can't eat veggies for breakfast. I've tried. The only thing I can do is cucumbers after breakfast of usually oatmeal. Yeah, it took me a while, too. I, was, yeah. I just thought that, how disgusting. I thought, you know, this is just not something <laughs> that I could do. You know, I was like, I'm not going to have dinner for breakfast. You know, I was okay to have breakfast for dinner, which was pancakes or waffles. But I didn't want to have my vegetables for breakfast. I really, truly had a mindset against it until I tried it. And I was well, like, I, w I went into it with just like, okay, I'm going to try it. It's only vegetables. And I don't, if I don't eat it, I don't like it. Who... Who, what's it going to harm? You know, it's like, it's like right. it's a dollar's worth of vegetables. If I throw it down the sink, who cares? It's no, it's not going to be any big deal, but I liked it. And then I liked it the next day and I liked it the next day. And not to mention that it's a very low glycemic load and there's low calories. So you're getting a big bulk of food at a very low calorie expense. And, they're, right. and it's really low on the glycemic index. So it's very healthy. And the other great part about it is, is you're really giving your body an influx of nutrients, micronutrients you've came off of, an, you know, like Gina says, an intermittent fasting. And so the first thing you want to do is load up with folate, micronutrients, and get that micronutrients into your bloodstream where the healing happens. And by default, they're low calorie, then the weight starts to release. And when the weight's releasing, then it's, it gives you momentum. It gives you incentive to keep doing the savory breakfast of, of vegetables. And, but I still love my steel cutouts and I'll have them on the weekends when Nick's home. Um, I love, I love steel cutouts and for transition for people going from whole food, from the standard American diet to a plant-based diet, steel cutouts is what I always recommend. But if you can make it savory and, and incorporate the greens in there, it's even better. I, I can't do that. I just can't. I can't put yeah. greens in my oatmeal. I, I, yeah. I, I just it's can't. not happening. But, no. But yeah. also, too, if you look around the world and other cultures, we're like the only ones eating this like sickeningly sweet yeah. breakfast and, yeah. and or eating all these animal products. Right. I, we have... Um, kids from China that are at our school. We have a, yeah. you know, international program. Right. And literally in Chinese, literally, good morning in Chinese is literally translated as, have you had your rice yet? Right. Exactly. You know, because we, we, they have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. I mean, and for me, I mean, I'm equally guilty, just like most everybody in this country as a mother. I mean, there are so many times when I, I was going 90 miles an hour and we would have donuts for breakfast. It's like, you know, this is, that's the worst possible um, breakfast you can have. So, but we would do, we would do cereal, you know, but then Nick and I started getting a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more healthy. And we would go to, from the chocula to rice checks, you know, corn checks, wheat checks, and then we'd get, you know, a muesli type breakfast. And then it just progressed from there. It's the more, you know, and the more you apply these healthy eating habits that your body starts responding to. Well, and Colleen says, what do you think of isogenics? I've not heard of this. I don't know what that is. Only, I don't know either. It's only one meal a day and two shakes with snacks. We don't go for things like, for example, like no protein shake. Shakes. Well, yeah. protein or just shakes, whether you, right. you know, some kind of supplement or whatever. We're talking about whole foods. Yeah. And this is what the whole basis eat. of our program. We want you to eat because when you use a, or drink a shake, literally you're bypassing the first stage of digestion is in your mouth. You start here and you have to have this because the enzymes are in your mouth. You start to, use, you know, you're chewing your, and you're supposed to chew pretty well. You're chewing, you're, you're adding all this, you know, the bacteria from your tongue. Bacteria. Yep. And you're, you're starting the chemical process in your mouth. So if you're drinking a shake, number one, you're bypassing that. Number two, it's hitting your stomach and then it's like a tidal wave going into your system. So y you don't want all this new, you want it to go in slow and take time to break down. So. Right. And anyway. I, and I'm, I'm, and also, I'm also guilty of wanting to jump on the bandwagon 
of the latest and greatest quick fix ways to lose right. weight, you know, and you've got um, Arbonne, which is a good company. They have their meal replacement shakes. You've got Slim Fast. You've got all the big canisters of protein shakes. And you know, right. those are $70, $80 uh, a canister. And when yeah. you look at the chemicals in there and the, well, the additives, and they've got a lot of the ones that are plant-based, um, okay, fine, they're plant-based protein, but they also have hidden sugars. A lot of them are going to have stevia. And yeah. I'm reading a book now, I'm just finishing it up called Food Junkies. And there's absolute science research that shows that sugar substitutes react in the brain exactly the same as sugar if not more potent. So they right. react and start that dopamine and light it up just like crack and heroin. So you've got to be really, really, really mindful of, of mm -hmm. reading those food labels. But, but we, don't, we, don't, we don't recommend any type of, yeah, see, isogenics uh, is whey protein. Whey protein um, is thinks, not plant-based. Gina Carr thinks that she thinks it's whey protein based. Okay, but so we don't, if it's we, whey, don't know. we we wouldn't recommend that at all because that's a dairy. Mm, that's milk. Yeah. Whey protein isolate is from cows. So right there, it's got casein protein in it, which is very causes inflammation and it's linked to cancer. So we're not gonna we wouldn't recommend um, yeah. that in any way, shape, or form. But like Jean says, chew your food. Doctor Caldwell Eschelston, um, who is a big proponent proponent of no smoothies, no juices. He recommends chewing, eating, and releasing those bacteria and enzymes in your mouth to get that wonderful digestive process started. All right. Awesome. So Teresa Adams wants to know, how do you make yogurt in an instant pot? And before, I'm going to let you take that away because you're the queen. But I also want to point out that uh, Kim Campbell and I did a show in plant-based living and it's on the starchqueens.net under videos. Uh, we had a, a video or a movie, a show, whatever you want to call it, on how to make yogurt in an Instant Pot. And then she Nick, takes will it you to... get me the three-quart Instant Pot? Sorry. I... <laughs> <laughs> will you get me the three-quart Instant Pot? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so not only did she yep. make... <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> What think. <laughs> All right. So not only did she show how to make it in the Instant Pot, make the yogurt, but she also, in another episode, showed how to make and, and strain it to make it almost like a Greek yogurt texture and yeah. to make it into almost like a, a cream cheese and adding some different different seasonings to it. So really good. So take oh, it away, yeah. Nancy. Okay. So on that note, how to make uh, yogurt in the Instant Pot. So... Number one, I tried it with almond milk, didn't work. Tried it with cashew milk, it was a little bit better, didn't work. Soy milk is the game changer. Always have to make it with soy milk. And I get the West Bray, where it's 100% organic um, soy milk with nothing else in it. It's just soybeans and water. So that's it. So always use a good quality organic soy milk. The other thing that you want to have is a vegan starter. So what I've used is vegan probiotics, and I always make sure that they're at least a 60 billion count probiotic. You can also get starter, vegan starter on Amazon. And so what I do is then um, take my milk, my, uh, my soy milk, and then I have, um, depending on the size of the Instapot I'm going to use, but this even this little three-quart, has a yogurt button on it and so what i do is see it's right there it says yogurt so it's really super simple you take the lid off of the instant pot okay so you take it off but i take my soy my soy milk and i use glass um like mason jars and i'll fill it up till it's about even with the just below the the rim where you screw the lid on so it's level so I fill those up depending on how many I can fit into my Instant Pot. And then I'll put one capsule of the probiotic in each jar. So that's really super simple. And then I'll just kind of swish it around and then I'll place it on the rack in the Instant Pot. And then this is the really, the really complicated part. You push the yogurt button. Do you put any water in the bottom of it? I don't. I never put water in the bottom of it. So then I set it for, I found that 12 hours isn't the, the, the consistency that I like. So I do 16 hours and then I just set the timer 
that it'll count down from however many hours you set it at. It counts down, and then 16 hours later, you have perfect yogurt. It is so So you hit the simple. button, you hit the button, and then you yeah, increase you it to 16. 16, and then I put the lid on, and I just, you make it so that the, 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 re, the steam release valve is open. I just turn it so it's open. It's never going to get hot enough for it to go under pressure. What you're doing is you're just giving it a warm environment to release mm -hmm. the culture for it to make the yogurt. And it works great every time. And Would then, you break um, the capsule? I break open? the capsule, open yeah. the capsule, break it, sprinkle it in, and I give it a swish like with, I just take a butter knife, give it a little bit of a swirl. And then mm -hmm. I always watch for a little bit to make sure that the um, probiotic is alive. So I watch to see if there's some bubbles. And the other thing that you can do to make sure your probiotic is alive is to put it in some warm milk. And this really, you've got it. This is science, Jean. You're the science, the chemistry teacher. This is, this is as, as much science as I get. Okay. I'm just envisioning that it's coming alive. It's and coming alive. It's coming out bubbles. of the pot. Well, you know, should see me. I'm watching this like, dang it, you better not be some <laughs> bad culture. So I make sure it's got little bubbles. So I wait and... And then I just started. It's the easiest thing in the world. Now, for me, I'm not a big fan of plain soy milk yogurt. I just think it tastes horrible. So you've got to add things like some fresh fruit. But I love Kim Campbell's recommendation on adding things. And then if you take cheesecloth and you put yeah. the cheesecloth in a bigger jar and pour it in and then strain it. And then if you can put, you can put in things like chives and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you can get a cream cheese and it, and it works. It truly works. And, it, and it's really good too. What size so, mason jars do you use? So when I'm using my six quart, I'll use the, the quart. I'll use the, the, I'll put two or three of the, of the quart jars in there. But then like for little ones that I make for my grandson, I'll just get the little like four ounce mason jars and put it in there. It's super, it's super inexpensive. So again, no almond milk, no cashew milk. Soy milk works the best, and it's pretty inexpensive. Get a really good quality vegan probiotic. It always should be in the refrigerator section of the health store when you get it. You can also buy starter vegan from Amazon. I've used it, but I don't think it had as it didn't set up as good as using a probiotic, at least a 60 billion probiotic from the health food store, and it worked really good. So that's how I make yogurt, and it's pretty simple. Colleen, I'm not a big fan of yogurt either, but I do like the texture when it goes through and becomes almost like a Greek yogurt kind of thing. And you can make it into like a cream cheese and put it on a potato. Now we're talking. Okay. Well, the game, the game changer for me is salad dressing. That's how I got into this was trying to come up with my uh, version of ranch dressing. And so I, I had to have a a creamy base creamy. and yeah. a creamy base. And the only way to do that was to get a soy yogurt. And I didn't want to go yep. because when you buy it um, off the shelf or in the grocery store, it's even the vegan ones are going to have sugar in it. They just seem to always want to put sugar or something that I don't want in me in the yogurt. So I was forced to make my own. And then when you do that, you can add your basil, your herbs, you know, you can make a delicious soy milk, soy yogurt based Salad dressing, that's really, really good. Really good and really inexpensive. And it's really, it'll last a long time as well, too. I mean, it can last in your refrigerator, refrigerator up to three weeks. So that's what, that's what I use it for. So that was a good question. That is a good question. Especially because it's easy to do. And, yeah. you know, instant great pot. to make. Yeah, yeah instant I never, pot. Yeah, I never did it in the oven where you set the oven at like 108 degrees. That was, that was not something I ever, I ever did. That yeah. was not something... Well, okay, this was, Cindy Gallagher wanted to know, um, I, I'm, the scale isn't budging, but my pants are falling off. What's going I on I love here? that. I love this question so much. Because, and this is what's happened both to Nancy and I, because, you know, we've, we've, we lost a lot of weight right away, you know, once you go plant-based. And honestly, if I hear one more person go, oh, I lost 400 pounds overnight and I went plant-based and yeah, I'm fine and I'm a twig, <laughs> I'm going to kill him. I am going <laughs> to no, kill him. No, don't do that. Then we <laughs> wouldn't have Talking Tuesdays anymore. Fair point. Fair, right? so, no. <laughs> fair point. But I, I will hurt someone. 
I mean, no, seriously. Don't do that either. Because <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing people just, yo, I lost weight overnight. It's not, neither one, Nancy or my journey takes time. was this way. It takes time. Yep. And you're learning about your body. And the scale is just one measurement. This is one of the reasons why in our program for the Starch Queens Weight Loss, we say to weigh yourself once a month in the beginning of the month, and then put the freaking scale away. Because literally seen, take it and literally, put it in the garage. Whatever. What are you going to do? Out of sight, out of mind, stop focusing on the scale because the scale is not the be-all or end-all. On a given day, you can fluctuate six pounds. Did you have a bowel movement yet? Did you drink a lot of water? Um, are, are you absorbing? Are you on your period? Are you retaining fluids? You know, your body can go up and down. So, yeah. So, you know, I've noticed the same thing. Like, like I bought pants and my scale is not changing. But the pants are. The pants are fitting and starting to bag on me. And I'm like, going, hey, I haven't lost any weight. What's up with that? Your body's starting to change. And especially because fat it has a different rate, metabolic rate that, that changes. And as you're starting to becoming more, more active and Kara, I saw you out there tonight on, in the <laughs> audience. What were you doing? Kara is on a, on a Fitbit challenge with me and I'm starting to get more active and Kara is like killing me every time I'll, I'll go to bed and I'll be like 2000 steps ahead of her and I'll wake up and she'll be like 5,000 steps at like six o'clock in the morning ahead of me. And I'm like, did you get up and run a marathon during the night? What's up with this? You know, and she had 20,000 steps today. It's like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Stop it. I want to beat you. Anyway. That's so a great I'm... example. That's a great example. <laughs> that's a great example of why your body changes. Exactly. Because I'm starting to change and get, and I can feel my leg muscles. I can feel my, my butt you know, starting to really tighten up and, and change. And so my pants are starting to fit way different, even though the scale hasn't changed. So, you know, I'm starting to develop more muscle, you know, I'm losing, you know, weight, Inches. you know, I'm burning fat, but the scale is not saying anything, you know? So yep. it's a great question. You just got to let go of the scale. Seriously. Yeah. Let go of the scale. Yeah. And, and you're going to start to see other changes. We call them non-scale victories. Like, like my wedding rings, you know, I'm at this point now, I'm almost where my rings, I'm really worried about them flying off my hand because my fingers have, get them have size. lost. Well, I'm waiting because, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them over to my middle finger until I get down to my, my goal weight and then I'll get them sized because I don't want to have to change them once and then right. do it again. I only want to do it once. So I'm going to switch over to another finger at a certain point because I'm really worried about them just going fing, flying right. off. But you know, yeah, and, that would be bad. I, and I put on shoes that I was going into the city to a, a sh plant based thing and I put shoes on and normally I wear walking shoes at all, all the time. <laughs> That's all I wear. But I put shoes on and I was like, I was slipping around and I was having a hard time walking. And I'm like, what is going on? And I looked down and there's like this gap behind my shoe, like behind exactly. my foot. And I'm like, I know these fit. Have, yeah. and, my, and my feet are shrinking? Yes. Yep. Your feet yep. change too and, yep. and change in size. So your body is changing. So stop worrying about the scale. Right. Stop focusing on this because it's not the be all and end all of this program. Because nope. what we're teaching is you're changing your health destiny and the weight's going to come along with it. And your body yep. size is going to change. Yeah, so. it's, it does. I mean, I was on a plateau for a good year and a half, and I was uh, stuck at a size 12, and I hadn't gone. My mom was sick, and it was when she was, you know, the end stages of her life, and then the, when she passed away, I needed to get some a dress to wear to her funeral, and I went in, and I was, like, going around looking at the 12s, and um then I was looking, I tried them on, it was too big. And then I tried on a 10 and then I was like, okay, so now it's an eight. And I, and uh, I, my, the scale hadn't changed, but your body, you lose inches. And that's why we um, recommend people to measure with a measuring tape because your body changes 
and it's working. Remember, your body never sleeps. It's always working. It's healing. You're moving more. You're feeling better. So when you're feeling better and you're healing, you're more active and your body is reshaping. It's healing. And then you'll get on the scale a month or three months or four months later, and you'll be down 15 pounds. You know, your body can swing six pounds one way or the other at any given time during the day. It all is based on what you ate the prior two or three days, how fast you eliminate waste, how much water you've drank. I mean, I'm, I eat five pounds of food a day. And then on top of that, I drink four Two, th probably three or four quarts of water a day. We know that a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. Are you up pissing all night? Sorry. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hydrated. Like, wow. <laughs> you are. So, oh my God. Yeah, but I like, I love water. So, so that's why you got to get out of that whole head game that, that and it screws with your head so bad. It's like, we are so, so programmed to be a yeah. number on the scale that we have to turn that off. And we have right. to look at it on, I like to have a, I have a pair of jeans that I measure myself if I'm, you know, am I up or am I down? And then your basic measurements, how are my, how's my bra fitting, you know, and then go from there and go from Kira there. Kara Hesson says, congratulations. She says she's down an additional size, but the scale is not cooperating. I used to be a XXL in pants and now a large. Very That's amazing. Exciting. Good That's job, crazy. Kara. What are you doing? You're like running all night. What are you up all night jogging? You, I mean, seriously. You two are pretty competitive. I'm telling you. <laughs> all right. I'm coming okay. after you because we're Thanks. almost at, we're, we're, let's see. Unless she's like, while I'm on the show, I can't check because it's on the phone. Oh, right. Uh, well, you should yeah. be able to tap. Can't you tap your Fitbit and tell you how many no, steps it is? Yeah, I can see how many steps I have. Oh, but, but not how many Kara has. Gotcha. Don't have any care it has. All Unless right. she's on there on the treadmill while I'm sitting here on the phone or on the you know thing. Uh, All that's right, probably so it. you guys, we're gonna keep you guys going. <laughs> where you're soon gonna be runners, and we're gonna do a half marathon together. Oh. No, oh, no, yeah. no, no. I don't Bring run it. unless somebody's Bring chasing it. me. You guys well, are I'll sick. Chase you. Okay, just we'll sick. chase you. All mm -hmm. right. Our next question is from Lisa Sin, who is also oh, is a, a Starch one. Queen member. This is a good one. This is a really good question. Yeah. Lisa says, um, first of all, she was sorry she couldn't make it tonight. Um, but she says, this isn't as much a question, but more like a comment. She says, I'm having such a challenge with myself fighting that diet mentality, like wanting to weigh myself all the time and everything that goes along with being on a diet. And why aren't I losing faster? I know this is a lifestyle, not a diet, but it's hard for me to know just what that means because my mom started me on diets when I was 10 years old. I'm brainwashed. I just don't understand. This is powerful. This is powerful. We could talk, I could talk for days about this. I know, talk right? For days about this. This is my, this is right up my alley here. Do you want to start, Jean, or do you want me to dive in? You go. We'll share, you're we'll, share, I, we'll share this. We both can relate to this. So, yeah. all right. Been there, done that. My diet, first diet, probably started about 12, Lisa. Um, I was always had that little extra 15 to 20 pounds um, with me. And my mom um, was tiny and petite. She had a 17 inch waist when she married my dad. And so she's, you know, was five foot three. And I think she was felt like she was overweight when she weighed 105 pounds. So my mom, you know, everybody has some level of eating disorder, some level of uh, food addiction. And I'm reading the book right now called Food Junkies. And it is one of the most powerful books oh, I just I've, got ever that read. Book. I've ever read in my life. I recommend it. And another one that I'll show you, but to get back here to your question is, is that, you know, if a person, a woman usually who's been overweight since childhood and had a mom that was wanting them to lose weight, we have to let go. You have to, we're adults now. We have to forgive our moms. We have to give our dads or the person who was, was um, recommending that we go on a diet. So what I found when I was going to grief counseling was, as I talked about this with my grief counselor, was my mom's um, continual uh, recommendation that I, you know, lose that six pounds, lose that 12 pounds um, to get those pants to look just right. Those little innuendos that really depleted my self-esteem and really put me into um, obsessing about what 
the scale number is, how the pants did my dittos look perfect, you know, that sort of thing. And it was just this constant battle in my brain about appearance. And my mom was very hooked on appearance. That was, that's her thing. She's still my mom. I still are love her very much, but you have to forgive the people that have started us down that path because it was really no fault of theirs. It's like my, my, my counselor told me, it's that we don't know in their childhood what may have triggered them to want us or them to have a specific appearance. And it was when my, um, my grief counselor said that, it was like the light bulb went on. And it's like, no, you know, I didn't know what happened in my mom's life in her early childhood that may have sent her down this path to why appearance was so important to her. And it was at that moment that I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done carrying this, uh, this obsessiveness. I'm letting it go. I'm forgiving my mom. I love myself unconditionally for who I am, what I'm doing in life. For everything that I've, I've done, I found myself even being following in my mom's, my mom's footsteps, being critical towards my own daughters. And I swore I would never do that. So I've taken that whole thing off my, off my shoulders. I'm done with it. So, you know, it's our sacred past. We've all gone up and down this yo-yo uh, life um, who've been dealing with weight challenges their entire life. It's time to step off the insanity train and just, again, I'm going to say it again, love yourself, love your appearance, accept that we have to get healthy. This is, this is about getting healthy. This is about changing your health destiny. This is about letting your body have time to heal. We did not get to this weight overnight. And it takes no time to gain weight. And it takes a long time to lose weight. So you can't expect to just instantly lose 100 pounds. It doesn't happen. But the magic in between point A and point B that you're getting your health back is the journey. And that's where you learn everything. You start tackling these things that your whole life have been bothering you. You start peeling back the onion. You start looking at the void in your life that you need to fill. And... Um, and you start looking at what it is that you need to, the changes that you need to make. And, and you, start, you start living your life. That's what you have to do. And you start learning about food. You start educating it. And there's this, always this psychological hang up, you know, and I truly believe that your mind has a big role in that. And it's in every food that you eat, every choice that you make affects your health. It always has, and it always will. But we have to get off that, that cycle of, of obsessiveness about the scale. And we have to look at also cravings and trigger foods. And for people that are very sensitive to sugar, and, and sugar addiction is a biochemical addiction in the brain. And so when you're looking at your food and you're not removing the, the refined grains, the flour, the alcohol, the sugar the caffeine, marijuana, cigarettes, drugs, when you are still bringing in those foods that are mind altering and addictive, have caused addiction, you're not getting off that rodeo. You're not getting off that, that, uh, that merry-go-round of addiction. And when you're feeding those thoughts, it's like you're never going to get a calm brain. And it's until you get that calm brain, when you give up the sugar, the caffeine and the flour, then you can start really, truly going, okay, you're stepping back with, with that fog, that fog of addiction, that cycle of cravings, it's removed, and you can really start looking at how you want to proceed on your journey. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, it's, and again, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And, and if you are somebody that's, you know, always anticipating failure, you've got to give, again, forgive yourself and, and try to go all in. Don't approach the lifestyle 
50%. Don't approach the lifestyle 25% with the notion that, well, I've done this weight, this is Weight Watchers, you know, this is Jenny Craig, this is Nutrisystem, this is the Scarsdale diet or Slim Fast, you know, I failed on every one of them. This is going to be no difference. So you have to have the mindset that this is forever. This is going to be a lifestyle forever. And you're going to give your time, give yourself time to release the weight because it's more important to get off blood pressure medication. It's more mm. important to get off of Nick. My light went out in here again. It's like a timer. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a ghost. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. My light overhead just went out. So, um, you know, you've got to get off the type two insulin, the insulin medication, the blood pressure medications, heart disease. Oh, there we go again. I'm telling you, my house is possessed. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So, you know, my mom's, you know, she knows I'm here talking about her. So uh, anyway, yeah, we've had some special things happen. But um, well, let me jump you in. You got to get off the drugs. You got to get off yeah. the prescription medications. And as you're healing your body, the weight will release. It always does. It always does. The Blair Witch version of Starch Queens. That's funny. Gina, you never know what's going to happen on the Starch Queens. This so, is true. So Lisa, 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 in all seriousness, <laughs> this is a, this is every single person I've ever talked to that I've coached faces the same situation within your mind. And, um, and I always recommend, I always recommend if there's something that's blocking you, seek medical attend you know talk to your doctor get professional counseling there it's always there and it's like the best money i ever spent you know most insurances will cover counseling for me it was grief counseling if you've lost somebody in your life and you're not dealing with it you've got to go to grief counseling and then you can open that door up to talk about other issues and it wasn't like i said until i made the connection to my mom and the way she was behaving towards me could have been something that triggered her in her childhood. And I instantly forgave her. And it's like, okay, this is on me now. Everything about my journey is on me and the food choices that I make. Am I fueling myself or am I fooling myself? Am I looking at food as energy or am I looking at as it at recreational eating? There's a huge difference. And it's, it's again, it's education. You've got to read a really good book that I recommend for everybody to read is, where'd it go? By Michael Moss. Um, here it is. This was a game changer for me when I started to understand the effects of food addiction. This is called Salt, Sugar, Fat um, by Michael Moss. Powerful. So I read, it's powerful. And when you learn about how the food, big food companies have truly manipulated <coughs> the ingredients in food <coughs> excuse me to be addictive then you're just like okay i'm not i'm not flawed there is right. this is a real this is a real chemical biochemical addiction that you've got to break right okay so you're not alone lisa you just got to keep working on your food keep working right. on you it's not an overnight event it's a lifelong journey and it's a learning it's an awareness and it's an awakening it's truly an awakening what it is and and, and i've loved my journey i've cried i've struggled i've had little fits i've had temper tantrums because i really liked frozen yogurt and i liked it with reese's pieces and yogurt chips and do i miss it you know i said because really you know no but now with a calm brain and thinking about what that does to my body i don't need to go down that path I think an apple tastes equally as good. But again, honey I'm crisp. further. I'm, yeah, honey crisps are the best. So this is all part of the learning and the journey. Um, Jean, so great question, in. Lisa. Go ahead. Let me jump, jump in, in Jean. I am. Um, I did an interview with Andrew Spudget Taylor. Yeah. And if you've not seen this, it's on, the, on my YouTube channel. And this was a powerful, powerful interview yeah. because he realized he had a food addiction. And he describes this day in because he used to like go into the bathroom and cry yeah and and he hid Literally. it from his wife he hid it from his family and it was it was severe depression <clears throat> and total food addiction and you know falling into the pleasure trap yeah and he realized it he realized he was addicted 
And he realized it on this one day. He said he was taking his son to the park to play. It was a beautiful blue day, blue sky. The birds were singing. You know, he's walking his kid down the path. And he just sat down on the side of the path and started crying. And it's like two or three-year-old kid is sitting there going, Daddy, Daddy, it's okay. Don't cry. And he's so like, sad. he knew. Yeah. And he knew he had this huge, huge, huge addiction. And he said, I, you know, with food, we have to eat to survive. And he said, what could I do? Because if you're like an alcoholic, you can just say, okay, just say no. And no more alcohol. You're done. And don't put yourself into situations where you have alcohol, whatever. Okay. But with food, oh my God, first of all, you have to eat to survive. I have it. And it's, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, every meal and you're driving down the road, at least where I live, I can't go a mile without running into fast food and oh, this yeah. and that and this at restaurant and this restaurant. And anyway, so what he did, we're immersed in it. We're immersed yeah. in television, radio, Facebook, right. internet. We're immersed with constant advertising. Absolutely. You can't yeah. uh, commercials. Oh my God. Yeah. Every 10 seconds it's food. It's yeah. And fast food and crappy food and Viagra. You know, or that too. Yeah. Mm. So anyway. Um, oh, thanks Gina for posting the, the, the we love interview. you, Gina Carr. You're the best. Yeah. Awesome. And so he went for a whole year, a whole year. That's all he ate was potatoes. That's it. He said, I had to break this food addiction in my brain. I had to do it. And he went for one whole year. That's all he ate, potatoes. You know, he, he you know, mixed it up with sweet potatoes or you know, regular potatoes, whatever. And he might have had a little bit of condiments or something like that to add to the flavor of the potatoes. But that's all he ate for one entire year. And obviously, he lost a, a phenomenal amount of weight. He looks amazing. Over 100 pounds. Yeah. yeah he, he, looks, he just is fantastic. But he said he broke the food addiction. And I'll never forget his comment because uh, he had a little party, you know, little gathering. And depression. And, and he completely ended his depression, all gone, 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 yeah. gone. And all the other health issues that he was dealing with, gone, gone, gone. So his first day of eating, he had grapes. And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah. We have grapes always taste this amazing? It's right. I mean, and, and your palate changes, you know. So your taste buds change and you start to appreciate the foods. And so that's one story. The other thing I wanted to share was when I was graduating with my master's and I was so depressed because no one was coming for my graduation. And yes, it was a ways away, but no one in my family came down for my graduation. I was really depressed. And one of my professors, you know, finally just said to me, you know, at some point you have to start doing things for you. Yep. And not worrying about the family and what they think. You have to start focusing on you and your journey. You're number one. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be number one. Exactly. Yep. So, and, and just starting to think about you and loving yourself, loving you for where you are and what you have accomplished. I Absolutely. Mean, and, and I just want to say, Lisa, you've done huge. Huge. You've lost a tremendous amount of weight. You've already are starting to move now, now that we got you a Fitbit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And she's, she's a warrior. The, she's getting there. She's getting up on that. And yep. she's, you know, she's mm -hmm. so and she's getting the she's getting the addiction. And now she's starting to move a lot more. At least this is powerful. These are little things that you have to, to focus on and celebrate for yourself. And it's like, wow, I'm achieving this. Wow, I'm moving. Wow, I'm losing weight. Congratulations. Thumbs up. Amazing. Exactly. You're yeah. doing it. You're in the group. You're doing it. You're doing it. Be and, patient. And it may not be, yeah, have some patience because, yeah, it's a slow journey. Oh, oh. trust us. We both know. Mm. And we're still on the journey. I mean, Nancy's already ahead of me, but, you know, hey, it's a journey. And you're on it. Right. And celebrate that journey. Celebrate all the successes. I mean, I see your face thinning out, Lisa. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh my your gosh. face looks amazing. I know, and people are noticing, and they're yeah. asking, "What are you doing?" Yeah, because the thing you, is, you've got yeah. the secret. So, just be patient with yourself. Love yourself, right. you know, and do it for you. Forget the forget the word diet, because this is not a diet; it's a lifestyle. Love you. Yeah, it, it, and bingo. And that's the other thing that I wanted to put on here is that this is a marathon; it's not a sprint. 
all of us have our entire lives have gone to Weight Watchers, all the other diet programs that I've said just a few minutes ago, is you go in with a preconceived notion of this is going to be the last time, my last <laughs> diet, I'm going to do it, damn it, this is it, I'm yeah. done, I'm yeah, going to get damn skinny. And then, uh, I don't know about you, but me, I fizzle out. Week two, I'm like, I'm out, I'm done, this is boring, I don't like it, it's hard. I'm not doing it. And, you know, oh, like, and measuring. And oh, my God. And I points, don't measure. It's like, oh, oh my God, just kill me now. The points made me crazy. The <laughs> so points it's like, made me nuts. Points? Oh. oh, I had the little point tracker thing. I kept it in my pocket. I washed <laughs> it in the washing machine. I was like, you know, I was a, yeah, I'm out, no, you know. No, no, no. So, I'm a so Weight Watchers dropout. <laughs> oh, ab three times, I think, for me. So, um, yeah, this is something that it's every day. You're, you gotta remove the mindset that this is a diet and remove the mindset that it's gonna yeah. end. It's not gonna end until we take our last breath on this earth. If you really truly know your why, if you know right. your why and your why is a burning cauldron of desire within you to be your best healthiest self, then the journey is the whole, the fun part. Learn to cook, learn new recipes, learn all this yeah. stuff, dive into education, meet new people. This is how I met Jean. This is how I'm meeting yeah. all of you and meeting Fran and, and working. This is, this is the fun part. This is yeah. where, you know, your body changes. I don't give a rat's ass what the scale says because I'm in a size eight and that was my goal. And I don't care if it said I weighed 500 pounds. As long as my ass is going into size eight, I'm happy. All right. <laughs> So that's where I've got so I'm saying 500 doesn't, no, yeah, doesn't but I'm just saying, you know, your scale yeah. might be faulty. Who knows? But yeah. it's about the journey. Live the journey, embrace the journey yeah. and, and yeah. have fun along the way. This is not a diet. Period. Love yourself. Love yourself. Exactly. Love yourself. Love yourself. Forgive. Let go. Start okay. a new you. The start All a right. new you. All right. We've got another question. We do. We do. You have, uh, um, well, Teresa asked about the um, Instant Pot, and then C yeah. Cindy Gallagher, you took that about the pants are falling yeah. off, but the scale. But Brittany, you didn't see this when it was right at the last. She yeah. wants to know how to do cost-effective meals um, oh. that are plant-based. So, Jean, you want to do that one real quick? Sure. And actually, Forks Over Knives has a great, uh, I think it's by, by Darshana Thacker, she wrote a huge post about doing it, um, living, you know, plant-based yeah. on a budget. Oh, it's and fantastic. As a, fact, as a matter of fact, I'm going to the Bronx this weekend with, um, they're having a, a health fair at the plant-based Da Bronx. They're having a health fair. That's Rogers this, Group. Rogers, yeah. So uh -huh. I'm going there and I'm presenting this weekend. And we were just actually talking about this, that he wanted to come up with a flyer to prepare, to uh, show people how you can do this on a budget or even on food stamps and how you can do it. But there's, and I found for him, like, like literally like 10 websites. I just Googled plant-based on a budget. And literally there must've been about 10 different websites of people who've done it, who have gone out and lived on, you know, like spent like $50 a week on food. And it, you can do this. I mean, you're, you're talking about starting, you know, start with a 10 pound bag of rice, 10 pound bag of beans. How much cheaper can you get there? Potatoes. Like, yeah. A, a 10 pound bag of potatoes. I mean, and just starting with basics, you know, just, you can get, there's a lot of all the time, like frozen vegetables, you can get them on sale. You know, you don't have to buy organic. Okay. This is one of the biggest, you know, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I buy organic, but the bigger piece of what's causing the health issues is, is eating the plant-based animals, plant-based animals, <laughs> uh, is eating animal-based products, right? So those animal-based products, we're not designed to eat the, those. We're really not. And if you look at our digestive system, you look at uh, the, internally, it's not the, the, the system of a carnivore. It really is not. So, if we can get those products out of our life and start focusing on getting vegetables and fruits and eating things, and you can even do things like at, at Walmart. Walmart is really starting to get into and bringing in organic. So and Target, you know, 
and Target. You can buy things very cost effectively. And some of the stores around are starting to do like, if the vegetable doesn't look perfect, they'll pull it from the shelf. And some of them have bins in the back that you can get them for free. So or do almost ask, next to nothing. Yeah. And so do ask at the store. So there's a lot of, you know, ideas. You know, Aldi's is another good example. This is a store where you can go in, you, you bring your own, you know, boxes to put the bag, the, your own groceries. Super inexpensive. And you can get a lot of plant-based things there. So absolutely you can do, you can do plant-based. And if you think about it, because I, I, I'm tired of hearing people say how expensive it is. Because first of all, you're eliminating all the meats, which are really expensive. You're eliminating all the dairy products, you know, milk. You're talking about yogurt. uh, yogurts and cheeses. Butter, and cheese. How, butter, cheese. How expensive are those? We're getting rid of all the processed products. How expensive are those? You know, you get a oh, box yeah. and there's, boxes you know, like box, a, your count you get this box. box. Yeah. And it's only this full, you know, you get this yeah. big box and it's only half full. Right. So, you know, so yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. You can do this on a budget. No ifs, ands, or buts. So there's several good websites out there. Just go on Google and type in plant-based on a budget, and you're going to come up with at least 20-plus websites. Yeah, so. you're also saving money because you're not going out to eat. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to go. You're going to buy your groceries. You're going to eat at home. You're going to save a ton of money. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, Nick and I saved. When Nick and I first quit smoking, that was huge. And then we quit drinking diet soda. That was huge. Then we stopped eating out. That was huge. We only eat out on occasion now. And we eat at home. I mean, we've got so much more money in our pocket now for buying. If I want a new pair of pants, I'll go buy a new pair of pants or a pair of shoes. You know, we size have eight. that expendable size eight and also a size eight pair of shoe, which I was a nine to a nine and a half. But my feet have gotten smaller over time and I'm back mm -hmm. to a size eight. So Go, go figure. It's awesome. You know, when you're fa you lose weight in your face, why wouldn't you lose it in your hands and your feet? And, um, yeah. you know, and one of our Starch Queens members was like, I had to go buy underwear the other day. And I'm like, awesome. And a, that and is another... the miracle of the underwear. Yep. I'm not yep. kidding. It is. Because I pulled this out and go, look at this pair of underwear. I'm not going to fit my big butt Tushy. into that. Yeah, into that. I had other words, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Ass. <laughs> So I'm, like, I I'm, not gonna fit, I'm not going to fit my thing into there. No, but it's the miracle of the underwear. I put it on every day and it's like, oh, it fits. It's I amazing. I yeah, know. there's nothing better than a cute pair of bikinis, right? It All is. Right. And it's All hilarious right, no. because, well, I told you my whole family is, is you know, uh, they're still on the carnivore. And, and yeah, I, we've got the quite obese in my family. Um, yeah, most and, families do. Yeah. And it was interesting. We, we, we had a family gathering. We were all up at, at the house and my husband went down to get laundry because we had put some stuff in and there was already stuff in the dryer and he pulled it out and he started folding it. Like, you know, we take stuff out, we fold it. And he was just like, oh my God, look at this. They were huge. And he's like, he wasn't used to that. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. Like, well, we went, we, went up to, we went up to Salem a couple of weeks ago for Nick's aunt and uncle's 60th wedding anniversary. We had a ball, but Nick's putting his, his shorts on or his pants and He's like, what's going on here? And he pulled out, <laughs> pulled out of his pocket one of my socks. And I was like, oh, I'm glad that wasn't a pair of my underwear at the party. You know, so I just had to say that. Just made me, I just, I just had that pop in my head when you said that about the underwear and the laundry. You know, okay. it's one of those weird things that happens with my crazy brain. I want to talk real quick about Jennifer Abernathy. She had mentioned she had heard about apples. You should eat organic apples and absolutely that's part of if nobody um if not everybody has heard of the environmental working group ewg.org e again ewg.org uh -huh. you need to go on there and get their 2018 clean fit clean dirty dozen and clean, clean 15. 15 and apples are number four on yeah. the dirty dozen list. Number one is strawberries. Number two is spinach. Number three, I don't remember, but number four is apples. Anything that you need to eat the skin on, you need to either remove the skin or you need to have it be organic always. So we really, really recommend the dirty dozen and the clean 15 all the time. Um, but again, 
eating plant-based on a budget is so easy to do. It's really easy to do, and you're going to save a ton of money. All right, Jean, we're getting late here. We've passed the 6 well, um, o'clock. You got something else? I do. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, and I was just looking to see if I could. Anyway, on um, Pure Haven, they had, this has been my, allergies come spring you know in the east here we're, we're finally starting to warm here up too. and my allergies oh my god my sinuses have been clogged my poor husband because like I'm snoring like some kind of freight train or something with my sinuses are just really really clogged chug, 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 chug. exactly I, I feel bad for him because he's like got the earplugs going and you Aww. know it's, uh, poor guy Anyway, um, one of the things that has been my godsend from Pure Haven Essentials, it's called Soothing Chest Rub. And it kind of replaces that, that Vicks Vapor Rub. Used a lot and, of it in my day. Oh, my God. Or I used to use mentholatum a lot to help open up my sinuses. Well, I've been using it, especially because my nose was running so much. And I felt like my, you know, I was blowing my, my nose with, like, sandpaper. You know, yeah. when, when, Hurts. when it does. I mean, my nose got really sensitive and, and whatnot. So I would put some of that in my nostrils and put some on my chest and the vapor coming up. Oh my God, it was amazing. And I, and I love it because I know that there's no toxins in it. That has been my favorite product over this last week. They also have this wellness. Um, it's a new wellness line that they just started uh, using. And this, they have like a sinus that you can put in hot water and then just breathe. And that has also been very, very helpful. So those have my, been my two favorite products, um, uh, you know, of recent vintage. Nice. So. Nice. So is that your favorite things for the week? That is. Okay. How about you? My favorite thing um, is two things that one is I ordered Dr. Furman's new 100 best foods magazine. This okay. is something new that Dr. Furman has done, and I've really enjoyed it. It's his 100 Best Foods, and I'll show you the inside of it. It's very well done. Like, there's cranberries and uh, broccoli rub, Brussels sprouts. So what he has is he's given us really in-depth information on these 100 best foods that are for healthy living. And in the back of it, he's got um, – and there's also 25 recipes, and if you're – familiar with Dr. Furman and his Eat to Live. Dr. Furman has really good recipes. I've always liked his recipes. There's watermelon, watercress, and we've talked about all of these plants and, uh, and how good they are in the Starch Wings program. And then he's got a six-week program, zucchini. So I'm really loving the education on Dr. Furman's first release of his, of his magazine. Then my nice. second, yeah, I'm loving it. And then I'm loving the new, this is uh, the plant-based magazine. This is a beautiful, my, my most favorite plant-based magazine, are, of course, is I love Naked Food magazine. This is coming up second place. Plant-based, this is a beautiful magazine with lots of great information. So I'm loving these two magazines. And then I want to go back real quick to talk about Lisa and Lifestyle Backpacker. Nick and I are going to climb Mount Whitney August 7th of this year. And uh, you've got to know part of your why. When you know your why and you're living your life to the, to the extent that you want to do, you know, indulge yourself in buying some, some books, some literature on a hobby. And I'm loving this edition of Backpacker. It's motivating and it really reinforces your why on a regular basis because this helps you stay focused. It's like you want to train, you want to exercise. So I'm loving these three magazines these last couple of weeks and um, great information. I really like them. So yep. I'm, re I'm recommending them. Jennifer, you're right. We do have to watch the chemicals that we put on our bodies. Oh my God. Always. The makeup lotions. Uh, oh my gosh. And the EWG, if you've not seen this, they have the, uh, the chemical database they also have it for cleaning products. So do please check your stuff out before you purchase it. They have an app called Healthy Living. Please, please, please check your stuff. And if you're tired of having to check your stuff, just buy Pure Haven because the whole product line is non-toxic. Right. Just saying. Yep. Anyway. It's just safe. It's safe. All right, All right. everybody. Anything else, Jean, you want to add for tonight? Or shall we do no. our closing? Oh, one, one, one last thing. 
Um, we have next week oh. is the first time we have Dr. David Deneyev. And if you've not met him, I did an interview with him. He was a medical doctor. He's got a pr practice in Brooklyn called Medical Compass MD. And he is the doctor who helped Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams to reverse his diabetes. And I've got awesome. an interview. I don't know if I told you or not. I've got an interview with Eric yeah. Adams coming up in June, June 16th, I believe it is. Congratulations. Yes. That's yes. amazing. I know. He's incredible. His journey yeah. is just fabulous. Well, and didn't then, he used to be a, um, uh, isn't he a politician too? Wasn't he? He was, he was a U.S. Senator. Senator. He was a U.S. Senator. Mm -hmm. And now he is Brooklyn Borough President. Mm -hmm. He was also a, a captain in the police force for, in Brooklyn. Yep. Born and yep. raised. Brooklyn product. And so anyway, um, but Dr. David Deneuf is going to be our, we're going to have a series with Ask the Doctor. So yep. he's going to be up next Tuesday. And the focus is going to be the main part of our discussion is going to be plant versus animal protein. What's the difference? And is it good or bad? So, you know, for either one. So we're going to be talking about that. And we've got lots of questions like, for example, will a plant-based diet help us live longer? So lots more coming up. And then if you have some questions for the doctor, uh, we've got a couple more, but I don't want to tip them off. No, nope, we're not going to, we're stuff. not going to, we have, yeah, you want to, you definitely want to um, yeah. watch next week's broadcast because it's be talking Tuesday with Dr. Deneyev and it's going to be very powerful. And this is something that we are working on, um, on, it's going to be, a, uh, we would like to get every couple of weeks, have a doctor with us as Dr. Deneyev. And then we have another doctor. So we, really need to, to share with you the importance of this lifestyle and having yes. the doctors join us um, where we bring it's gonna in be awesome. well we bring in the medical side and Jean provides the science side I bring in the lifestyle and coaching side of it and the, the heart the psychological side. the well not I'll get in your face and tell you don't eat that meat you know I'm, I'm gonna get tough <laughs> it's hard for me though because I like everybody so but you still you've got to have somebody who's you know been there worked through it so together it's a great team it's a great yep. team. It's a great I'm stuff. We're doing to good it. things. I am so super excited. All right. So thank you everybody for joining tonight. Please yes. share our um, live broadcast on your Facebook page. We are always very appreciative of that. If you're interested in learning more about the Starch Queens, please go to sqweightloss.com. That's an S, a Q, weightloss.com. And then we have this amazing website called starchqueens.net where there's recipes, cooking videos, a ton of amazing information on how to adopt a plant-based li lifestyle. Find Jean's gone to a lot of work to put all the links in there. Dr. McDougal, some, you're going to find Some people go on Eshelsky. vacations. I, I build yeah. websites. Yeah. And so, you know, definitely look at our website. Yeah. Um, and we have a wonderful program where we have, we're helping people regain their health. They're starting to get off their medication. They're, they're, you know, shrinking. They're getting healthy. They're getting t stronger. This is what we want for everybody. So Jean and I can help you also find that great success. Everybody All have right. a wonderful, wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend. Yes. High five. Thanks for joining. High five. High okay. five. Star Queen. All Peace right. out, everybody. Night down, boy. We love you. Good night, Mary Ellen. What is it? Sue Ellen or Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen. Jim Bob. Good night. Get out of here. Bye. <laughs> night.